Uh, so I just got out of the shower. If I hadn't, we would be taking off the old dressing and then rinsing it with still saline and a still gauze to dab it up. Um, but since I just got out of the shower, everything's clean and Ren is going to start the dressing process. Um, I'm starting with just like polysporin, which is what Mel wants me to use, um, on a Q-tip. And I don't put it like right on the stoma, but kind of like around it. Yeah, we don't want it to go inside the hole, but this is for keeping uh, infections from getting in through the skin, hopefully. Yeah. And I'm just using the other side of the Q-tip for the other one. Uh, also, before doing any of this, Ren has washed their hands. And so this is an important part that uh, you want to keep everything as clean as possible. Uh, since we're, you know, dressing this with scars and tape, it's not like there are stars still when dressing, but, you know, trying to keep infections from getting in. Yeah, off screen, I laid out the, um, the items for the dressing before I started it. Um, so I wasn't like touching a whole bunch of stuff with like really dirty hands. Um, so like I washed my hands and then I laid out the items and then I washed my hands again um, before starting the dressing process. Um, so the next thing I'm going to use is a uh, sure prep, which helps to uh, create a skin barrier and let the tape stick better. And this is important for you know two reasons. Dren mentioned the skin barrier thing, and that's because we are you know changing and cleaning, reapplying, dressing really frequently. Uh, ideally every day, um, pragmatically every like one to two days, sometimes three if I forget or have a really busy schedule or something. And I put, uh -huh. and I put this anywhere that tape goes, not on open like wounds generally. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is just where the adhesive part is going to be contacting. And for me, because I am a young and very physically active person, the tape holding part is helpful because I am wiggling and it falls off when I dance or run around. Uh, the next thing I'm using is a non-adhesive pad. Um, this is also not woven. This size is two by three, and it will cover both uh, nephrostomy tubes um, because I cut it in half. And Dren mentioned non-adhesive and non-woven. Those things are important because there's going to be some discharge from the stoma. Just that's what happens when you have holes on your body that aren't naturally there, and we don't want it to get stuck to the adhesive because that'll work, maybe cause bleeding, curing. Um, so this is basically kind of like the, you know, if you think about the inside of a band-aid and uh, the pad there that doesn't stick to the bloody scab, just that pad is what blood is cutting right now. Yeah, and I cut it in kind of like a Y shape. And that Y shape will go over the tube. You place the tube where you want, this one. Yeah, so this next part, right? Ben said, can you place the tube where I want it? Because the tubes attach 
uh, I want the teeth that I'm going to put a glow away. So I don't want it straight down because then the jointed bag like has to go down my butt and that's weird. I also don't want it straight across because then it pulls and drags down. So I usually put it at somewhere approximating a like 30 to 45 degree angle. And then I put the dressing over it like that. And the next part that I am using is a non-woven drain sponge, four by four, but you can use any kind of dressing that you want to cover it. This particular product doesn't matter. It's entirely personal preference. So like gauze is a thing you could use here if you wanted. Yeah. Practically speaking, not everyone would need or want this part maybe. I don't have a lot of extra from my stoma now. Um, when I first got it, it would leak urine a lot. And so I wanted gauze or something absorbent to be able to soak up that urine and keep it away from my skin. Now that the stomach has settled out a little bit, it rarely leaks and if it leaks it's just a tiny little bit. So we could probably get away with gauze, but the other thing is, like I said, I'm very active. And so what the gauze gives me now is cushioning. So that well, when I have something on my back or if I'm lying on the floor to do exercises or, or whatnot, there's something in between, something soft between my stoma and whatever's hitting it or what I'm lying on or uh, anything that might contact it and it just makes it a little bit more comfortable for me. And now I'm using a uh, paper tape to uh, completely cover the gauze. And then the adhesive of the tape is sticking to you when you put the show prep. Exactly. So, like, this paper tape was, we got it at Target, it's Johnson & Johnson, it's not, like, these, these are things that you can find at your local, local pharmacy or convenience store. Uh, and then the last um, step. Amazon. Yep. The last step that I do is like a final piece of tape to anchor the tube where Mel wants it. Um, Basically, strain release. Yeah, and I kind of do this by putting it a little bit on the tube first. Um, let me get my hand out of the way. Uh, Kind of looping it around the tube first and then on the skin so that there's uh, even less um, chance of this piece of tape coming off. Yeah. And that's it. I'm gonna stop the video and do the other side. Oh wait, actually, now the dressing has been trained, I can arrange the tubes and where they go to in places that are more convenient for me. My right nephrostomy tube is connected to a drainage bag, which technically I'm supposed to keep below the level of my kidney all the time. Uh, this is hypothetically supposed to be an ankle bag, but it's honestly, it's bulky and sticky and sloshes around and doesn't really secure very well to the ankle. So what I did is there's an Etsy creator, uh, Spring Path Essentials, which is a small business in Massachusetts. They are fantastic, shout out to Spring Path. And they make the Fast Me Too bags. And what I've done is I've just threaded it through a belt that I happen to have already at home. In this case, mine's a running belt. And that bag is always below my kidney and then I just take in a frost me bag, drop it in here, and I basically have like a, a little pouch slash, not quite fanny pack, but you know, similar idea. Now the other end is my left one, and you'll notice it's not attached to a bag. This is cap because 
we've done some stenting internally to try and open up the ureter again. It seems to be working a while, and so this is basically a trial to see if they can take out that tube entirely. But in the meantime, it's kind of dangling around, and so what I do is I just tuck it in my underwear, honestly, and that generally keeps it out of the way and not like waving around in the ring. wind. The wind. Consonants are hard. I'm deaf. Uh, and I'm all set to go adventure in the world with the fast me tubes. <laughs>